So, Divine Knockout. New game, uh, developed by Redbeard Games and published by Hi Res Studios. Uh, Hi Res, best known as the creators of Smite, Tribes Ascend, Paladins, and some other stuff from over the years. I received three keys to play during the closed alpha period for DKO, as they call it, and wanted to share my thoughts on the game and where it stands based on my experience in that time. Big disclaimer here, again, I was playing during the alpha. Uh, I've continued to play more and can already see improvements and changes being made, so just take everything I say with a grain of salt here. It's pretty likely it'll change or already has changed by the time you're watching this. So a little bit of background on me. I have uh, like 3,500 hours on Smite and a few years ago I was a pretty high rank in their competitive mode. Uh, I only say that just so that I can make it clear that I'm very familiar with high res and I'm very familiar with these characters in DKO. Uh, since all the characters in the game, so far at least, are just re-kitted, remodeled uh, versions of existing characters from Smite and coincidentally also existing characters from Mythology. Who would have thought? It's like a triple layered character. So November 4th, 2022 is when I received my keys. Uh, so all of my game time was spent on and then after that day. Uh, the way closed alpha worked was one person would get a key. So in my case, it was me. Uh, and then that email would also have two other keys uh, to give out. I gave my two keys to a couple friends of mine, one of which is a Brawlhalla player. He's pretty high ranked in it, so he's very familiar with that type of gameplay. And as it turns out, DKO has a lot of similarities to Brawlhalla and other uh, fighting games like that. And then the other friend isn't really big on MOBAs or fighting games. He's, you know, just a little bit all over the place. So we had a pretty good mix of backgrounds amongst the three of us. So our thoughts varied and yeah, not we weren't in an echo chamber, you could say. At its core, I'd say DKO is a fighting game before it's anything else. Every character has access to a light attack, a heavy attack, a dodge ability, and they can double jump. Beyond that, they each have a set of four unique abilities. The first ability in everyone's kit is a movement ability that will also deal damage. The second and third abilities will vary in what they do, but they're usually damaging. And then the fourth ability is an ultimate ability. So in that way, it's a bit mobile-like, but the actual gameplay typically is closer to a fighting game. Most of the time you're trying to time your dodge correctly so that you can get a good combo off on the enemy. Time windows for most interactions in the game are pretty small, which means a lot, but for me it means I'm pretty bad. My friend that plays Brawlhalla, however, is pretty nasty in all the right ways. Alright, so the good. It's a great party game. The new player experience is really nice. And there are a lot of game modes that each actually affect gameplay in meaningful ways. So point one, the game is very fun to play with friends. When it was the three of us queuing together, it was always a blast and very much scratched that new game itch. I think for me, the sensation is best compared to when Overwatch first came out and nobody really knew what the hell they were doing, but it was fun to mess around and experiment in a very casual atmosphere. We actually ended up playing a little drinking game one of the nights that we were uh, on DKO and that was a blast. So if you're into getting drunk, there's a lot of potential for that here as well. Point two, the new player experience is also very nice. We were never able to fully confirm our suspicions, but we're pretty confident that when you first jump into the game, you'll have several matches where you're queued against bots. If this isn't true, then me and my friends are actually just insane and would consistently pop off for multiple game win streaks. I'm pretty sure we were against mostly bots though. But this was actually a good thing since there's really a whole lot to learn with this type of game and I think it's particularly important to make players feel really good at the beginning. I'll hit on this more later on but in general to win in DKO feels really good but to lose really fucking sucks. And then for my third point on the good uh, that I see in the game. There are a lot of game modes and they do actually affect gameplay in meaningful ways, which is a thing many games fail to achieve. All right, so I'm just gonna go off the top of my head here, but there's Knockout, which is just team deathmatch. There's a point control game mode where you have to stand in a zone and gain points over time. There's a mode called Oddball, where one person carries a crown that takes points for their team every second, but if the enemy hits them with anything, the crown drops and somebody else can pick it up. Uh, there's a mode called Coin Blitz, which has very much become a meme with me and my friends for so many reasons. It is simultaneously the best and absolute worst game mode in any game ever created. Regardless, my point stands that there are a bunch of game modes and they do actually make a difference. Like for Oddball, there's a real chance that you'll go the entire game without hitting a single other player. But it's still fun because you're essentially playing tag, just you're super fast and you also happen to literally be a god. 
Obviously, standard knockout wins the game mode vote most of the time, but that's fine too, because even that is fun. I would hope the base game mode is fun, and thankfully it is here, so well done there, Redbeard. Also, last little bonus good point here, the art is very pleasing in this game. All the characters are super cute, and the maps are pretty, so yeah, kudos to the art team. Okay, so now for the bad, or at least not super great points I have, which again, I'll note, I don't believe I'm very good at the game, so that's where I'm coming from with all this. I spoke with some of the other players in the Discord for the game, and there were some mixed opinions on the things I'm about to say, uh, so take that with even more salt. You know, I could just suck, so that's a possibility. So point one, uh, the character design seems pretty flawed to me across the board. Uh, point two, there needs to be significantly more content. Uh, and then point three, which is maybe the most damning, at least to me, when you're losing, it feels really bad. And I don't just mean like, you know, it's a close game, but you don't come out on top. I mean like the stomps are just miserable. So uh, on the topic of designing the characters, I think just the overall approach to how they've designed characters in this game is a little strange. Uh, so all characters have different abilities, but the range of usefulness for these abilities is a very broad spectrum. Uh, some abilities just straight up suck, uh, and some are wildly overpowered in game breaking, uh, and not in a way that I think is a balance issue, just like in a needing to be reworked kind of approach. It's similar to the problem Overwatch faced for a long time where if an ability doesn't have a hard crowd control effect, it's generally going to underperform compared to other ones. So for example, Soul mostly only has damaging abilities that don't crowd control. In addition to that, they have super long telegraphed windups before they fire, making it very easy to avoid them most of the time. Compare that to King Arthur, Satan himself, who has a movement speed buff for his allies, a slow to enemies in a wide range, and a stun, all while also being tanky as hell. To put it plainly, I think stuns are horrible for this game and just should not be in the game at all. The trend is very simply that characters with crowd control are better than characters without it. The argument against this is that if you time your abilities correctly, you should be able to dodge most of that CC. But in reality, most of the time, if you're against an enemy team that has three characters, each with two or more CC abilities, you get ass blasted and have no fun at all because you're constantly knocked up or stunned or just generally getting dicked on for extended periods of time. I don't think there's a lot of outplay to be done there. I'm not sure if there's really going to be a great solution to the whole CC thing outside of the designers using it very rarely and hopefully removing it from some of the kits that already have it. As with all games, getting CC'd feels awful and DKO is far from the exception here. The game needs a hell of a lot more content to really have staying power. In an hour, you'll likely have played every map the game currently has. The maps are good and generally have a theme that sets them apart, but there just aren't enough of them. This is a pretty easy fix though, and I'm sure Redbeard Games already has a good live ops plan to handle it. Thought I'd mention it though. Finally, to my third point, getting stomped is just the worst experience ever. This is a pretty standard thing for fighting games, so maybe it just feels worse to me as someone that doesn't really play that type of game very often. But frequently, I'll just want to close out of the game following a really bad match. This ties in again with the CC thing, because generally, if you're getting bodied for an entire game, it's because they have a Thanatos, King Arthur, and Ymir, and you just don't get to play the game. It kind of all ties together at a certain point, uh, and I guess the best advice I could give for avoiding this problem is to just get good, but let's be honest, if you're even half as stupid as I am, that's much easier said than done. I just want to be a cheapy little dude and punch people to my heart's content. Okay. So yeah, I'll close out the video with my top character picks right now. If you pick any of these characters in the game's current state, you will probably farm. In no particular order, King Arthur, Susano, Thanatos, Thor, Ymir, and Hercules. These characters eat ass for breakfast and yours is on the menu. Playing anything else, I find questionable. End of the day, it's a pretty fun game. I'm interested to see what a ranked game mode would look like. Long term, I don't know how invested I could really get, but I also don't think that's what they were going for in the first place. So yeah, it's a fun, casual little party game to play with friends. I would recommend a download. 
It's free, so what the hell do you even have to lose?